Hello, this is Archie Dunlop with Talking Astrology with Archie on Friday, June the 30th, 2023. Today, I'm going to be talking about Monday's full moon. That's Monday, July the 3rd. And in my opinion, this full moon will last approximately two weeks until the new moon on July the 17th. So when you listen to what I say in this video, you know, really I'm talking about the period between July the 3rd and July the 17th. Um, it may go on beyond July the 17th until, you know, until the following full moon, but really it's a two-week thing. I'm certainly not just talking about what's going to happen on on Monday. I'll be having a separate video for that. So as far as the way I'm going to structure this video, um, I will start by talking about my forecasts for the 12 signs, how I think this full moon is going to impact um, each of the 12 signs. And bear in mind that my forecasts are quite general. They're very short. There's a certain amount of exaggeration there. And, you know, maybe you should just regard them as being for entertainment only. I will then be talking about um, the full moon itself, the, the chart for the full moon, how the full moon interacts with, with other planets and what it might mean for us in general and indeed for the world in general. And finally, I will consider the full moon as it might impact the world. Um, I'll be focusing on particular areas in the world, particular countries that might um, be impacted by the full moon more than others. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is do my um, star sign forecasts. And this is for the really for the two week period starting on Monday, July the 3rd. Aries, until July the 17th, you want to adopt a higher profile, but there are fundamental issues to be dealt with, perhaps of a domestic nature. Controlled energy with great consideration for others can help move things along. Taurus, during early and mid-July, you're able to manage conflict using an expansive and positive approach. One material reality can be transformed into another, and all it takes is a bit of vision. Gemini, financial matters are perplexing, and you might be tempted to take dramatic initiatives, but careful, even silent preparations are the way forward. Don't let extraneous thoughts confuse you. Cancer. You've been here before and you know how it ends up, but in this case you can benefit from your friends, if not in terms of cooperation, then in terms of guidance. Leo, up until July the 17th, things could easily descend into chaos if you don't handle them correctly. You need a single goal, perhaps of a business or career nature, and you mustn't be distracted. Virgo, before committing yourself to creative projects, you need to ask yourself why you are doing what you are doing. Once you have a coherent philosophy, it will be hard for other people to knock you off your path. Libra, it's a question Librans often have to face at this time of year. How do you balance your desire to be successful with the needs of family and relatives. You have to go deep into the cause of the problem and allow your emotions to lead the way. Scorpio, is it the small facts that matter or is it the big concepts? Deep down, you feel that it's best to build things up slowly and not rush towards these big concepts but society thinks otherwise. Yet the answer to your problem can be found in the behaviour of friends and partners. Sagittarius, 
The answer is very simple, but everyone wants to make it complicated. Focus on your resources and what you can see in front of you, and then everything will turn out just fine. Capricorn. It might feel as if enemies and rivals are getting the upper hand, not helped by the feeling that they know more than you and perhaps have greater experience. But now you're seeing a different view and you have the opportunity to seize the initiative. Aquarius. It might sometimes feel that hell is other people, but there is no need to cut off communications with the outside world in order to achieve happiness and success. Just manage your availability in a disciplined way. Pisces. Trying to do amazing things is great, but have you got the resources? Are you going to burn yourself out? Maybe you need to consider your social networks and ask how they can scaffold your future success. Short journeys can bring long-term benefits. So those are my star sign forecasts for the period from July the 3rd to July the 17th. So let's now look at the chart of the full moon. So here's the chart. Uh, this chart is set for um, London approximately 12, 12, it says 12, 38, 28 seconds around. So um, it doesn't really matter, you know, the fact that it is um, set for London, it could be set for somewhere else, but uh, um, this chart um, can be looked at in several ways. So I'm thinking that most astrologers, you know, particularly, you know, those in the media who want to, or those who want to look at it from a sun sign perspective, are going to very much focus on the fact that this full moon receives a favourable aspect from Jupiter. So let me show you what I mean. Um, there's the uh, there's the Sun in Cancer and there is Jupiter and it's making a sextile to Jupiter and there's the Moon in Capricorn making a trine to Jupiter. So Jupiter's um, supposedly going to make things all right. Um, but maybe we should start to think about the actual symbolism of a full moon before we get too optimistic about Jupiter. You know, by definition, when you've got a full moon, the sun and the moon are opposite, opposition each other. Um, so the principle of the sun is at odds with the principle of the moon. So this full moon, which of course happens every year, it's not a rare event. You know, there will always be um, a, full, a full moon with the moon in Capricorn. Um, so you have the sun in Cancer, which is all about um, um, perhaps security, um, well, the family, and um, you know one's emotions. It's opposition the moon, and the moon is in Capricorn. And um, you know the moon doesn't really work very well in Capricorn. Um, moon in Capricorn can be quite mean, can be focused on money. Um, can be focused on um, putting its own interests before everything else. So with this full moon, you know, there's a, there's a question of, you know, how can we, you know, reach out to other people, create security for ourselves and other people, and do this in such a way that we're not being utterly selfish. You know, that is that is a big problem. Um, you know, Moon in Capricorn is not interested really in just fuzzy emotions. It wants to know where the money is. And so this full moon is, is, um, is a real struggle. Now, you could say that Jupiter's providing some kind of resolution. Um, you know, Jupiter is in Taurus. Jupiter is about good luck. Jupiter is about success. So it may be that we will have these insecurities about money and material possessions, and there could be a stroke of luck. Something will help us get what we want. Um, 
it may be may also have perhaps a spiritual dimension you know jupiter in taurus you know one thinks of something very earthy um something like uh, you know okay jupiter's a male planet but one might think about some kind of earth spirit that allows us to think beyond the money and realize we need to focus on the earth um Jupiter and Taurus is very much about, you know, environmental well-being. Perhaps we'll start to realize that, you know, it's not the money that matters. It's not the sort of short-term concerns about stuff like property values or whatever. Jupiter and Taurus reminds us of the the eternity of the environment. You know, the Earth will always be here. We're on this planet for a short period of time, and we need to just stop worrying about money and start... Um, and start becoming, you know, more spiritual. Look beyond, look beyond our own life. Realize that, you know, for example, when we look at oak trees around us, those trees should be living for a centuries if they're not cut down. Um, and that puts our own life into perspective. And so perhaps this full moon is asking us to think beyond our own life. Um, but still, um, we can do that and still be be fortunate. So you can see. Um, but there is a positive spin on this full moon. Um, I'm not entirely convinced, though. I actually think this full moon could be quite difficult. Um, let me explain why. Um, you know, as you might know, I'm quite into using the 45 degree aspects. Um, I believe that, you know, the trine, you know, I've talked about the Jupiter trine moon, Jupiter sextile sun. As far as I'm concerned, sextiles and trines are quite minor aspects. Um, I regard a close semi-sextile, a 45 degree aspect, as being more important. And we will note, you'll notice that the sun at 11 Cancer is making a 45 degree aspect to, to Mars. And Mars is likewise making a 135 degree aspect, that's a sesquiquadrate, to the moon. So in fact... Mars is strongly placed um, in this um, in this um, full moon chart, and um, it's true to say that Mars is aspecting um, the Sun Moon midpoint, and the fact that the Mars is aspecting the Sun Moon midpoint um, gives it gives the Moon a Mars characteristic. And again, I've mentioned his work several times before in previous um, previous um, videos. You know, Charles Harvey, in the book he wrote with Michael Harding, um, Working with Astrology, you know, he talked about the Sun-Moon pair. Um, I think he talked about it as something like um, the cosmic marriage. And he said it's very important to look at what planet is aspecting um, the Sun-Moon midpoint. Um, in certainly in terms of um, natal charts. And, uh, you know, his famous example, Janis Joplin had Jupiter on her sun-moon midpoint and was a very over-the-top over person, and that, that very much said something said something about, about her. Now, in this case, in this chart, we've got Mars aspecting the sun-moon midpoint, so it's a very Mars um, full moon. Um, it's about anger. It's about how we express anger. It's about how the world expresses anger. Um, it's, you know, it's about, it's about war. You know, go, Mars is connected with war. It's about fights. And so the full moon is about um, seeing the full picture. You know, things are no longer in darkness. The full moon reveals everything. So if there are fault lines, whether it's in personal relationships in relationships between organizations, countries, whatever, this full moon will start to reveal those um, those fault lines. So that really is um, is something to something to bear in mind, and it perhaps gets worse um, if you're into hypothetical planets. So let me um, let me just show you um, show you the midpoints. So these are these are the midpoints. I'll try to make this as big as possible. So uh, if you if you look at um, 
you know this you know you, i mean you needn't really worry about the precise details of um of all, of, of all these um uh of all these midpoints but um so you can see here here is the sun moon midpoint at 1119 capricorn capricorn cancer and there you can see mars at 1046 Cap, you know, um, ten forty six cardinal. Hence, you can see Mars is aspect is on the Sun Moon midpoint. But we also see that Hades is on the Sun Moon midpoint, and that the Sun Sun and Moon are on the Moon Hades. The Sun is on the Moon Hades midpoint, and the 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 yeah, Sun is on the Moon Hades midpoint. And the moon is on the sun Hades midpoint, and this this hypothetical planet Hades is really nasty. As I've said before, Hades is about death. It's about garbage. Um, it's about criminality. And here we have it. We have Mars and Hades on the sun moon midpoint, and so that suggests to me that this full moon could bring um, some real nastiness out into the open. Um, it could be criminality, it could be death, it could be, you know, things, nasty stuff that we just really um, weren't expecting. So overall, when I look at this full moon, um, I am aware that Jupiter is making a sextile to this, to a sextile trine to the full moon. And you could say that, uh, you could say that that is protective but you know trines and sextiles in my book um are not particularly strong aspects um and the this because they're not you know they're not dynamic you know but because the way it goes with these this hard series of aspects you have a conjunction then you which is very exact then you have an opposition which is 180 degrees then half of 180 is you have 90 that's a square and you go half of the square is 45 or 135 and that's a semi-square that's what i'm talking about so um i'm thinking yeah i'm thinking that this is this is um quite a nasty full moon and i think the next um the next two weeks between now and a new moon on july the 17th some really quite sort of unpleasant things um could be revealed um in the world now that doesn't mean to say that we as individuals have to deal with it maybe as individuals we can just focus on the jupiter and um, get into our spirituality and um, think beyond our, our financial insecurities maybe maybe um, but on a sort of global sense I, I, I don't i'm not i'm not convinced i think we do we do have to be careful i should also say that this full moon is the day before um United States Independence Day. So um, it's it may have an effect on um, the, the United States. No, it's not exact, um, but uh, you know that 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 mar this Mars here uh, over the next few days, week, this Mars will be moving towards um, a semi square of the United States' Sun. So I think. Uh, there's going to be stuff going on, perhaps relating to this realization that things really are quite bad, the criminality, um, death and destruction, all that kind of stuff um, may relate to, um, may well relate to the, um, relate to the United States. Um, you know, I'm not predicting the end of civilization as we know it, though. Now, as far as other parts of the world are concerned, um, I just want to set up the um, astrocartography chart. Um, so this is where we can sort of track um, the full moon, where it's where it's likely to have the highest impact. Um, you see this red line here. This is the this is the part of the world where the sun is exactly on the mid heaven, exactly. Um, you know where it culmin you know where the sun is was is culminating and where the moon is anti culminating um so all down this red this red line so the places that get 
get hit. Well, in Europe, that would be Geneva. I think Geneva gets hit. Eastern France, uh, Belgium to some extent. Um, then I don't know, you go through Nigeria. So these are areas that might be affected um, by the um, by the um, by this full moon. Um, you know, I know that France, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in France. I mean, it's already pretty bad in France. Um, I don't know where the riots are, but uh, they're supposed to be all over France. This full moon is not actually hitting Paris. Um, it's more hitting, you know, more like places like Strasbourg or Lyon, um, uh, you know, the real east of France. Um, so maybe that's an area that's an area to consider and yeah Nigeria may be affected by this full moon and this is so this is where the full moon is exactly um is exactly on the on the midheaven we should also perhaps consider where Mars is on the midheaven because because remember Mars is aspecting um this semi square is aspecting this full moon by semi square so that's that might also be something we want to consider um and this line here, um, Mars goes through, goes through somewhere east of the Urals. Don't think it specifically hits anywhere serious in Russia, but it, you can see that it goes through Tehran. Uh, maybe is that sort of eastern eastern Saudi Arabia? I don't know. Is that Yemen, Oman, somewhere down there? Um, this might be a part of a world that might be a bit difficult. A Tehran it goes through Tehran, so capital of Iran. Um, so maybe in Iran there's going to be some turmoil, uh, I don't know, demonstrations, acts of violence, uh, the full moon might bring it all out, popular protest, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so that that is that is um, a possibility. But when looking at astrocartography, you know, I must emphasize that, that I am being theoretical. And, you know, in my experience, astrocartography um, is um, is fairly um, hit and miss. So I think those are the main. I think those are the main themes um, for this um, f for this full moon. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because one can just go on and on and on, and one reaches a certain point where one is just uh, wasting words. So anyway, um, that's all I'm going to say, and I will talk to you again very soon. <laughs>